a few moments ago. <laughs> Alright, that's it. I tried to catch the fly. I couldn't catch the fly. I tried for like 10 minutes. I used my hat. I used a paper towel. Nothing caught the fly. So, in lieu of catching that fly, we're gonna make cake. And we're gonna frost that cake. I have all the stuff here for a cake. I have all the stuff here for a frosting. And you know, a dedicated viewer wanted to see this. I'm not gonna say who, but this is for you. All right, well, um, let me go over what I have here. All right, I have my dry mixes all separated. My wet mixes all separated. Always mise en place. Get all your ingredients out, get everything you need. I don't have every everything. I get my tools out to whisk and stuff, but we're all learning here. It's why you're here, it's why I'm here. I have sugar. And people, baking's not that specific. This will still be fine. I didn't have enough regular sugar. I had a little brown sugar to it. It's fine. You got beige sugar, okay? Don't worry. I got eggs. There's like four of them, yeah? Eight ounces, I'm pretty sure I'm going off memory here. Eight ounces of whatever oil you like that doesn't have too much flavor. A pound of milk. Teaspoon of vanilla, respectfully. A pound of sugar, no, two pounds of sugar and one pound of flour. 5.5 ounces of cocoa powder. Two teaspoons of salt. A tablespoon of baking powder and a tablespoon of baking soda. Uh, oh. You can tell I need some of this. Also some water, you need a pound of water. It's nice and warm. You see, you can't see it, but I can. There's some very nice steam coming off of this. Yeah, that's just about it, stick around. We're gonna make some cake. All right, now, first things first, I forgot to mention the ingredients of the frosting. We got, like, six cups of powdered sugar, two thirds of a cup of cocoa powder, two teaspoons, of vanilla extract. Two sticks of butter. I forget how much that is, but good amount. A third of a cup of milk? Uh, 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 nope. Two thirds of a cup of milk. Oh, you can see me right now, because I'm gonna explain this, but after this, you're gonna see a bowl. Dry ingredients. Get your dry ingredients together. Whisk them all together. I'll show you. We got this right here. Make your life easier. Damp rag. Here's that flour. Here's that rag right there. First, it, 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 it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna add in my cocoa butter. People are always like, no, do this first, this, this. No, just get your dry ingredients together. Got the cocoa powder. Got baking soda, I think. Baking powder, I think, or vice versa. Salt, very nice. Move that all to the side. They're all chummy over there. Take your whisk, your nice, nice warm whisk. It's very, very nice. Feel it in the uh, little indent of my hand. It's all snug. And then you just take this, and look, you know, again, I'm gonna, throughout this whole series, throughout my whole channel, I, uh, the amount of people I work with, they're like, oh no, baking's scary. It's, it's not. I'm doing a large-scale recipe. It's not large, large. This is a pretty big recipe. It's not that scary. It can be expensive. It can be time-consuming. It can be a lot of things, but it, until you get into really scientific cooking, it isn't. You see this bowl? This is a bigger bowl. You need to add your sugar and the rest of that dry mix. And uh, you're not gonna worry that you just lost like a teaspoon of whatever that is, whatever mixture that is off to the side into the sink, get over there, come here. You know, we're gonna, don't worry about that wreck, it's keeping my life stable, and my bowl. You see this? You see this giant mix? Mix it, don't just look at it, come on, you got this. Now notice, it's not moving that much, I'm just doing this, and it stays pretty stable. This is a clean counter, it should be sliding. This will save your life. Dun -dun. Dun -dun. All right, 
we got the uh, dry ingredients together. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, you know this this water right here. That's last. We'll we'll go back to this. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten you water. I forgot you once. That's okay. First, the smartest thing to start with your eggs. You see these? If you add these in last, you're gonna have trouble finding them throughout that the rest of the mix. You don't want to be searching for your yolks. You want to just put those in there first. And then you just want to. That one was already broken, but for aesthetic, had to do it. That's a good start mix. Next, adding a little bit of milk. Getting a little milk on the counter too, just for, you know, just for fun. You know what, Penelope, go in right there with it. See, we're having a, we're having some chaotic fun, right? You, you like this? You like how I don't have to use this hand? Remember. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Okay. Oh, la di da Go back to the other cups. Get those in there. Go to your extra cup of milk that you almost forgot about. Try to play it off cool. All right. All right. The dressing maker in me wants to slowly add the oil. Just no. You just add the oil. We have fun here. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Beautiful mix that you forgot to record. How nice. I added in all of my wet mix to that dry mix. The only thing you didn't see was me ramble on about how you don't really need to do that slowly. You know, it looks nice. You know, you're not missing much. It was like maybe a minute of content, you know, just showing you how I did this basically slowly adding the mix you saw me make and then the other mix. But uh, yeah, we're gonna add in that water. Now, when I first made this, made this at work and I looked at that recipe and I was like, that, that is a liquidy, liquidy recipe. And then I made the cake and I was like, wow, you know, I guess, I guess it's supposed to be. Would it have been too dense if I didn't add the water? And then I accidentally forgot to add the water one time and it ended up like me, way too dense. So, we're gonna add in that water. Now this, do this slowly. You know, this this is this is two different, very different viscosities meeting each other. And uh, it'll just start to form a puddle on the outside and splash you. It'll become incredibly hard to mix in. Like even that's a good amount, like that's almost too much. You can already see it's around the edge, like, be careful. A little bit more. Oh yeah. Alright, and by the way, the reason it's uh, hot water, you want it to like start to melt the ingredients together. And it's easier to mix in. It's nice and warm, so it kind of, you know, slips between everything. It becomes blended in quite nicely. Ah, <sighs> good children, do remember. Due to the entropic principle, the water you add in cannot be taken out. Then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see this? Nice and, uh, nice and liquidy cake mix. And again, you're gonna say to yourself, you know, that's a little bit, that's a little bit loose. Yeah, it is, but it'll come together and be friends with all of its internal parts and make cake and we will eat it. Three, two, one. All right, I'm gonna teach you a little trick here. We have these little spring form pans. Honestly, whatever you wanna bake your cake in, I, I see people do nine by 13, does not matter. I'm doing, I think six inch spring form pans. You, you know why I like these spring form pans? They, they're sometimes they fail on you and they leak everything out. That, that could happen. That's why I have this for underneath. But spring form pans open up whenever you're done baking and they'll just release the cake. I'm gonna teach you a little trick with baking anything. This one's loose, right? So we might have difficulty with this one, but 
If you are about to bake into anything and you do not have parchment paper or it's not feasible to put parchment paper underneath, spray a good amount of fat. I'm using duck fat. Coat the inside liberally with said duck fat or whatever fat or oil that does not have too much flavor. And then, you take a liberal amount of flour, put it into the center, put it into the center, center, and this can be a little wasteful. I'm going to be a little wasteful so I can be sure I get my edges. Then you just take said flour, and if you're using a spring form, be very gentle. But you just move the flour over every surface, and it creates a separate layer and it makes it so your dessert or whatever releases. Now, I have yet to try this inside of a spring form, so we're both finding out today. But hopefully, it works in my favor. And it should. Then, at the end, you go over to your uh, bin, and you just... And all the excess flour, will remove itself. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it with the other ones and you're not gonna see that, but yeah, that's that's essentially it. All right, they're dusted, it's very nice. You know, let me give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a, oh yeah, you, you like that? Yeah, we're all dusted now, it's very good. I am not going to measure this by weight. And I know, I'm always somebody who likes, likes weighting things out, you know, scaling things. No, not today. Today, and for most times when I'm baking something like this, I go to half the height of the container when I'm baking a cake, especially in a fr spring form pan. You want to uh, half the height. I'm using a scoop, which can vaguely tell me how many scoops I used. But besides that, maybe like three and a half scoops, something like that. Yeah, that's all, that's all I need. I know that it's going to double, so yeah. And if it's slightly tilted, and this isn't fully even, I'm going to measure and scale off the tops of the cakes. So, it'll be fine. One... And two... Three... And a couple of those were light, so we're basically gonna do four... Ta -da. There we go. Are you happy now? Good. Now, uh, this is a giant recipe, so I have to use this for something else. But, there you have it. Now I'm gonna bake these at like 350 degrees in my nice and preheated oven. All right, yeah, where were we? 350, you know, somewhat middle high rack. Oh, I can already see a little bit of the cake leaking out of the bottom. Let's hope that doesn't destroy the cakes. And we're just gonna put those in there and pray to whatever you pray to. I've set that oven for 15 minutes. And, uh, yeah, one of the pans is already leaking. I saw it putting it in there. They're old spring form pans. So, I've got a slightly newer one. And this one's pretty big. It's nice. It's pretty like me. All dressed in black. But, uh, yeah. We're gonna use this. And we're gonna do that same thing. And you're gonna, uh, you know what? This time you can watch. Very quick process, if I want to. Like this. Fine. Other hand. Over here. A little bit more. I'm being nice. Nice and slow for you guys. Now I'm not. Now I'm just, now I'm, now I'm upset. Now I'm like, one of those is leaking. Probably gonna make my pan dirty. Might make my oven dirty. You never know what might happen. Ovens are chaotic like me. Like this. Oh yeah. Then you just... Can you see that? This, this is very nice. I like it. Remember that technique with the halfway up thing? Yeah, just keep doing that. It makes your life very easy. <sighs> Let's do it to about... Yeah. You know what, that's nice. I like that. That's very pretty, right? I like it. You know, you see this thing you saw a second ago? I'm about to put it in there, but if you can, don't open your ovens while you have something else cooking. I don't care if you have something to add into it. 
don't. You ruin the heat. Especially in a convection oven. Ah, but I don't care or listen to rules. Even the ones that I'm supposed to follow. Yeah, great. You know, you'll see that in a while. Do you remember the things I say to you? Such as, we need to make frosting, but later? Yeah, alright, well, that's why we're here right now. With our uh, nifty little bowl support here. We're gonna put that there. And uh, this is not a recipe from my job, not one of my recipes. I saw the cocoa powder, I forgot to take a picture of the recipe I like to use for a buttercream. I saw the cocoa powder from Hershey's, it had a recipe on the back. That's what we're using. I've never done this before. Maybe it'll work well, maybe it won't. Uh, the direction seemed kind of dumb, so I'm gonna do it my own way and hope that that works. Okay, so the way the recipe and the thing would have had me do it is stir this into this, which I could try. Uh, you know, I might even just give it a go. But before I do that, I'm gonna see, see if these are ready to go. But right afterwards, I might even try it the way they... I, I might, you know, no, I'm not. This is confusing. You know, before I just wing this, uh frosting recipe and not actually follow directions. I want to make note, and I think I'm a little blurry, but that's okay. This is going to be the focus anyways. They still needed 15 more minutes. I just set that timer so I could know when to turn them. They're looking good though. Not They stopped leaking. It, it's looking okay, but back to where we were. The you only live once version of this is not following the mix cocoa into here. No, we're going to mix cocoa into here because my brain says that works better. All right, all right. And uh, yeah, that looks nice. Maybe we'll figure out why this is a bad thing. Maybe we won't. Oh yeah, all right. Incorporated enough. Now, you know what? I'm gonna add in the vanilla, start melting things. Very nice. The alcohol starts to just instantly melt whatever it contacts when it comes to sugar. Da -na -na, da -na -na. Now, alternatively, I'm going to add in a little bit of butter and a little bit of milk. And I might change to a spatula because this is going to get caught inside of my whisk after I do this for long enough. But for now, it's starting to form what looks to be a frosting at the bottom. You won't be able to see it. I'm going to do this. Bring this down here. Oh, it's getting to that point where it's going to be a pain to use a whisk. Alright, you know what? You'll see this in a moment. Okay, back at it again with this tiny spatula. Um, yeah, this is already easier and not getting caught in my whisk. Add the last of the milk in. Oh, yep. Add in some more melted butter. Oh, yep. Alright. I don't know if I like what I'm seeing. I might like what I'm seeing. No idea. Never made this uh, frosting in my life. Very risky to do it when making a video, but we take risks here. This life's a risk, you know. If you don't take chances, what the heck? Come on now. We're just gonna be real dangerous and add it all in and make it a pain to stir. And I'll show you why. Maybe we won't, maybe that was like what I was missing. But so far, no, it's just a pain. All right, I think it's back to the point where I can use the whisk. And yeah, that was a pain because it just splashed. Don't, you know, hopefully, you know, maybe this is sped up or it's entertaining enough in editing to where it doesn't need to be. But, you know, it's okay so far. We're, we're gonna take out the whisk. Speed this part up if you want to, but this should be pretty fast. <laughs> I don't know how much I like their frosting. It's kind of stable looking, isn't it? Okay, I'm gonna add something to this. Hopefully make it a little better. I was taking the you only live once thing and going a little further. I got some, uh, some cream cheese here. Some, uh, oh yeah. Get some of that in ya. Let's see if this makes a nice frosting. I think it should. I'm already liking that more. I might add a pinch of milk, but that's looking beauteous. Beauteous. All right, 
And so far, we got a glorious froster. Back at it again, again. Oh yeah, very much like that. Make sure I get the bottom. I have gloves on because I'm getting a little bit more hands-on with this. Wear gloves, don't get people sick, wash your hands, all good things you should practice. Now that. Let's see how it goes. Oh yeah. I can work with that. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. You know what? Hershey's, you should hire me. I make your frosting much nicer. Uh, or tell your test chefs. Add cream cheese to this recipe. A, it'll make it a little less rich and overpowering. And B, it makes it easier to spread. Easier to mix. And most people making this, you know, aren't chefs. <sighs> I think that's a beautiful frosting. And once it chills a little bit, doesn't have as much of the, I added melted butter, right? So the melted butter has brought up its temperature. Once it comes to room temp, it should be a little bit more stable and easier to frost the cake. You know, I just checked on our precious cakes and they're, uh, you know, I, I hope you don't fall. I want to bring you close. Sweetie, our cakes aren't done. That beeping telling you that the 15 minutes, then other 15 minutes on top of it, that beeping to tell you that's up, it's wrong. They actually need like 10 more minutes. Yeah. And some baking scientist, knowing the temperature and knowing the amounts and weights and all of that, which I didn't weight these, I didn't scale them. But some baking guru is gonna be like, well, I could have told you that that's gonna take so and so based on the amount of. The uh, uh, yeah. But they'll be done when they're done, okay? Uh, it's like 30 minutes so far, they're not done, okay? Just be patient. I'm gonna turn them again, and I'm gonna stop that noise. I know. It's like that smoke alarm that you should definitely add a battery to. But, uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you in a little bit. We're back. And I think they're done. The oven was making noises, and then I was setting up the camera, so they're probably more than done, okay? We're gonna check. Settle down, please, you know. The big one's definitely not done. That's just, that's just not gonna be a thing. And the big one's leaking. But look at these guys, these, these guys are done. You can tell a good trick, a good way of telling, is the edge starts to pull away from the, uh, the cake starts to pull away from the edge. Now, I've let this be open for too long, so, for the giant one, I'm gonna add like 15 more minutes, and I'm gonna drop the temperature to 330 degrees. Okay? All right. You see these? Uh, you won't be able to see this part, but I'm going around the edge, and they're still a little warm. You should wait until they're cooled down. I've done this a thousand times. It's not easy to do correctly, but I'm going around the edges. And uh, I assumed this was happening. They kind of baked underneath, so that's a that's a thing. We're gonna see once we're uh, once we're fully cooled down here if that's uh, going to break these cakes when I try to get the bottom of the spring form off. But for right now, these should hold if I lift them out. We're gonna see. They might not might be the ruin of one cake. Let's see. Like this, right? Open up that latch. And you kind of bounce things around here and try to loosen off the burnt on bottom of your pan. Oh yeah, we're getting there. Give a couple of taps over here. Oh, I think we just did it. Yeah, there's a, there's a little cake. Scrunch out of your sides so they kind of stay together. See any damages you did, just kind of pat it in while it's warm. That's why I like to do this while it's warm. Oh yeah, there's one. Surprising, I thought this one was gonna be a lot more damage. Getting this off of here is not going to be an easy task, but a task I've had to do before because I've made similar mistakes. I one time forgot to lock in a cheesecake correctly into a springform pan. 
And uh, yeah, had a similar situation. It went around the side of the graham cracker bottom of the cheesecake <clears throat> and baked underneath, so it stuck. And it was a lot of, okay, it's fully cooled. Let's just do a little bit of a, okay, that part's up. Yeah, I hope that's not the case here, but I've faced this war many times before. That, these, those, these things, I like these. They're nice and spongy. Very nice. Now let them cool, and then pray you can get the bottom off. For a neat little thing, you can uh, cool down your cakes quickly by finding a spot in your freezer. And uh, yeah, hope you don't melt things you don't want to melt. Ba -na -na. Ba -na 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 -na. Also, wear kitchen gloves, the oven gloves, I can't feel my hands, I'm not a great judge of temperature. Ba -na 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 -na. Ba -na -na. I'm not focused, in general, but in this video, right now, these guys are focused. Now, uh, I hope you like cutting cake, because that's the next step. I have these flipped upside down, now I'm gonna flip them this way. And, uh, yeah, I have to even off the tops. That's what you do with cake. Uh, they're still a little warm, so I have to be, like, slow, be very gentle. Only part of this has to be really fixed. Not much. You gotta be gentle with the sides, because it's still warm. You shouldn't cut your cake when it's warm, but I want to frost this thing. You definitely shouldn't frost it when it's warm, but I might do that too. Press in my sides. Get it all nice and uniform. I like that, I like that. Beautiful. Now, these are actually pretty thin layers of cake. I might use these as individual layers. See, if they were about this tall, I would cut them in half. The fly's back. I missed, but when they're this tall, it's not really a good idea to try to cut them in half. You don't need that many layers. You, you just, this cake right here, it's fine. It's not too thick, it's, barely the height of the first segment of my finger. Now, I got big hands, but still, no need to cut your cake in half. If you have three layers like this, they're not that tall. We're going to do a crumb layer, but first, 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 you have to set up your little spinny cake. Now, if you don't have one of these, don't worry. It's just gonna be a little bit more difficult. I don't know what they're called. Their cake spinners, I don't know, something like that. I take one of these. I take this lovely frosting. I take a dot, like that. I seal this on, right? That way nothing will move. Then. And it's gonna be hard to do a crumb layer with this, but bear with me. I have to figure out how I'm doing this at the same time. It's a little bit harder when you're making a video. All right, we're going to place a layer of cake down. Right, just like that. And I'm going to do the crumb layer directly onto this. So I, Take a good heaping amount, and you can always clean your cake spinner afterwards. But I take a good heaping amount. You can also do this off the cake spinner, but 
I just don't want to continuously waste gloves because that's a that's a waste. And again, this is just the crumb layer, so it's supposed to pick up all the little debris. Don't worry if you mess up, you know. Because making cakes is a process. The reason I'm not too worried about any of my edges, right, is because I'm not trying to sell this cake. I'm trying to enjoy this cake, maybe make it look pretty for like friends and family. You can be all meticulous if you want. That is really, really, really not my game. I do that at work, but I'm not trying to teach you to cook like you're at work. I want you to cook in a way where it makes baking less scary. Because baking terrifies people. You'll see I'm being very liberal, because I'm not doing like, I didn't freeze the cake, right? So that's making this much harder. But again, I can't keep my editor here all day. I can't keep myself here all day. I gotta work too. And I'm gonna clean up this cake board, don't worry. They're meant to get dirty. They get wiped clean at the end. I already tell it's tearing too much down here, right? So you just do this. You wanna get a, a good heckin', good heckin' base layer. And I have to work with this frosting because this frosting is not a typical buttercream that I use. It's a little, a little nifty. It's a little, a little different. You know what I mean? Make sure I get a good base layer. And just because of how rich this cake is, I might only make it two layers. I have not thought that far. Once I get a good enough base layer, I'm going to take this and using my little cake spinner, go to the spots where it's really, really, really breaking apart. Be extra gentle. <laughs> if the person who saw, who taught me how to make cakes saw this video, my god, they would know I'm not doing it the way they trained me to. They'd know I'm skipping steps that are a lot more easy at work. But, there is a good reason for that. And I hope they would understand. Please forgive me. If you're just joining us back, which this should be instantaneously, so hopefully it hasn't been too long, these are nice and frozen. Well, the top layer's frozen. That's what we want to make them pretty, right? So. This is gonna be my bottom layer. And I'm putting this frosting onto nice and cold cake, right? And it's instantly, instantly chilling down and binding to the top layer so it can be smoothed off. And you can do that quite easily by just adding a heck load, a heck load of frosting. And once you have a heck load of frosting over the top, my friend, you're golden. Now, this is the first layer, this is the inside. You don't have to worry about people seeing this, you have to worry about people seeing this. For that, I have another trick, but that happens later. Now, you want your cakes to have a good layer between them. You want a good, nice cake layer. You want that nice frosting, right? We all want frosting. We all want a nice, thick center. So, the way I do that, a good couple of globs onto the center, that such. Get a little bit extra, take a little bit back. You can be liberal with your inside filling, but just make sure you have enough to frost your cake liberally afterwards. Or else, uh, you've screwed the pooch. I'm gonna put this, you know, I'm gonna put that right there. And that's gonna be my little, uh, it's gonna be my little cake statue. Looks kinda scary right now, doesn't it? Kinda looks, kinda looks evil. I like its looks. It, 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 it looks like me when I just wake up. Rough, but workable. We could make this work. Now, I'm treating this kind of like a crumb layer, right? Even though I already have the crumb layer done. This is my outside layer. So, I just want to make it look like it's one layer. I want to fill in any gaps because I didn't check the evenness of my cakes because I didn't really care to. Maybe if you were paying me money an hour, I definitely would. But. Go around the outside like this, fill in all your little gaps, all the little spots where you're like, hey, that doesn't look very even. 
Or hey, that looks like it's sinking in. And uh, yeah, do magic. You can literally do this. It's not even that specific. People are, again, I haven't made or decorated a cake in so long. I, it's not even, it's not. I, I was doing this first try within like two hours of being taught how to make a cake fully. Completely by myself and able to sell the cake. We're not even trying to sell this cake. I hope you're just trying to sit at home and enjoy a cake. Like, that would be much nicer. I'm gonna show you, you see, this is all of my frosting left. This is very sad. We're gonna put it right on top. Now you might say, oh, Alex, that, that looks like a lot of frosting. And you'd be right, it is. It's gonna go all around your cake, so stop bothering me, please. Dun dun. Again, if you don't have a cake spinner, it's not impossible. Your life's just not gonna be as easy. <laughs> Sorry. Can't help you there, Chief. Now, I'm gonna take this little flat thing. I forgot what this is called. Uh, it has a name, trust me. And we are going to go around the outside, trying to keep it as straight up as possible, but not going too hard. Because if you go too hard, you're just gonna pull the, uh, pull the frosting off. Which is fine if you don't want frosting on your cake, but I imagine you probably want some frosting on your cake. Uh, so yeah. We're just gonna do this until we think it's smooth enough. And it takes, takes a few steps. You have to go around, you have to be like, it's like doing a, I forget what it's called, when you're filling in holes in the wall and you're trying to make it flat. Yeah, that's, it, it looks nice. It's some ASMR content when you get it right, but up until that point, it is purely like, oh, I'm almost done, and then one line goes awry, and then the whole thing's ruined, and you have to re-flatten the whole surface. That is cake making. That is making things flat. It's a pain. Trying to get everything even on all of my edges. This way, go back over the top. Try to move this out as far as possible. Hold it along the edge. And you see, like I was saying, you can get it almost perfect. And then lo and behold, it's like, hey, do you, do you remember me? I'm that nice finished edge you almost had. Yeah. One thing I'll say, Andrew, is his camera does pick up almost every bit of that. It's okay. You don't have to do that. Oh, I'm almost done. This is almost flat across the top. Not that I think I'll be able to get it absolutely perfectly, but if I do, hey, that'd be nice. If I don't, hey, I don't care. It still looks nice enough. If you take yourself too seriously, that's when you start making the mistakes anyways. I'm, I do that I do that a lot in my life, but I'm trying not to when it comes to cooking. Making content and making videos and sweating is not always easy. But even if I take that too seriously, I'll end up hating it. Don't hate what you like to do, please. Enjoy what you like to do, even if it takes time and patience. You know, we've given this thing a chance to sit inside of the freezer. It's cooled down a little bit. I'll say it's looking pretty good. You know, it's all in focus. I'm cleaning up a couple of the frozen edges just by using the warmth of my hand, one of the tricks I was taught. And it really can, like if you see this line, it's changing the color, but that's just because of the temperature difference. You can just fix your little stubborn edges once you've refreeze, refroze the cake. Well, you know, again, it's a little, little, it's a little misshapen, you know, it's a, it could use some sculpting. If this was a true sculptor's wheel, I'd sit here for a couple hours and just try to make it less oddly shaped. But that's a pretty cake, and it's going to be pretty in the inside. Alright, I've thought of somewhat of an idea. Now, I have that extra scrap from earlier, that extra cake scrap. And I, you know, I just ground it by hand. 
Now, you can put a whole piece of paper over this or parchment that perfectly fits out the cake. I see people do that all the time. That's really fun, but uh, I'm not that patient. And uh, again, I'm not like selling this at some fancy resort, so I'm not trying to get, I'm not worried about some really wealthy person judging my cake. You could be really wealthy and judge my cake. You don't have to make it. I still appreciate you. I hope you stayed for the view. Uh, I hope your day's going nice. You know, I hope everything's okay at home. But besides that, I'm really, uh, I'm not trying to super impress you. I'm just trying to give you some tips. Maybe you see something that I'm doing and you're like, I have a way smarter way of doing that. I helped you. Either way. I gave you a little bit of inspiration, you know. It's all I'm trying to do. Just trying to inspire you to make a mess in your house. But be happy about that mess, and then eat it later on. Take another cake pan, do a couple of tap, tap, tap. Flatten it out real nice and flat-like. Very nice. We're gonna dust the cake. A little bit more on this side, man. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty. Now, we are going to take a paper towel and be proper with it. We're gonna fix our little. We're gonna fix everything that dropped. We're gonna start from the outside, so we don't go just willy nilly smearing the outside. Uh, smearing the outside of the cake. And we're gonna get a little bit closer in. Oh, see, I already smeared it a little bit. Just a tiny, tiny pinch. I did it again, I think. We're trying to be as careful as possible. But it looks pretty nice. You've baked your cake. You've decorated your cake. You've smoothed your cake out. It's time to cut your cake and hope that it looks even enough. And if it doesn't, you can be sad, but just don't tell people. Oh, it cuts like a cake, I, I will say that. It certainly cuts like a cake. A good thing to do in between your cake slices, wipe your blade. Now I know, anybody who's a fan of knives will see me using a shun knife to cut a cake and be like, why? I, uh, I don't have a good reason. It was just a convenient sharp knife. You'll be even more mad about this next part. Can I find it? The thermometer? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> For my next trick, we're gonna take this tiny little knife from a exact opposite level of quality. It's a good knife, don't get me wrong. It's just, this is super expensive. Now we're going to, we're gonna, we're gonna go to the bottom here. We're gonna see if we can lift this slice out without it fully falling apart on me. Oh wow, look at that. It kind of fell apart right at the center. Let me just get that little piece out and then we can go... Wow. There's that little piece. There's a slice of cake. You know what, man? This is... This is some cake right here. I'm gonna take a little piece. I'll do an outro video, don't you worry. But I'm gonna take a little piece to try it. Oh my god. Mmm. Mm. I have no time to process that. You know what? Come here. You know, we've spent some time making some cake today, and it was delicious. Uh, I'm gonna take another bite because it's delicious, and uh, it even looks pretty. See so, yeah, it, it, it well. That side looks better, it's not resting on the dust, and that part fell on the ground, but... Mm. It's just good chocolate cake, I don't know what else to tell you. It's moist, the frosting's nice, it's sweet, it's not too rich. I hate when somebody hands me a chocolate cake and they're like, no, it's really good, and I try it and it's like, is that like pure baking cocoa? Or is that like pure, pure chocolate? This, this is nice. Well, I'm not even supposed to eat this much sugar or this much fat, but yeah. Mm. 
That is just divine. You know, we're next to my sink now. After decorating the cake, frosting, all that stuff, we're next to the sink because you and I have to do dishes. That's another video, all right? Promise that to you, okay? Pinky promise. Thank you for watching. Comment if you want. I can cook anything, I can try. Comment what you want me to cook. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike if you dislike. Please, subscribe. Ring that notification bell. And, uh, come back. Thank you. I appreciate you. Goodbye.